still has the impact without the loud rock? Oh yeah, well we don't consider ourselves a heavy metal band, we consider ourselves a rock and roll band. And so it's like, rock and roll covers everything. So we try to play as many things as we can learn how to play. Well, some of the songs were written acoustically and we'll be putting out an acoustic EP sometime late next year. And other songs are like, a lot of the stuff what? was written originally acoustically and then My we shit. take it into the studio cool. and end up doing it electrically. Wait, these like, are I don't, mine. I don't ever really rehearse with the band. Where'd you find them though? They're not great. They just blew everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me ask, I'll ask you a question again. So you were saying that some of the some of the songs are written acoustically, and you're gonna be putting them out on an EP. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When we originally got signed, we recorded a lot of material acoustically, and, uh, and then we've gone back in the studio and done some more. Just kind of like gone in one day and done it in one day. It's you know with this with this particular album Appetite for Destruction, we wanted to put the rock and roll out first, the hard stuff out first, but you know it'll. There'll be a lot of variation on the on the next records, all kinds of material. We won't ever give up the hard stuff, but you know we'll venture into all kinds of new territories. If there are so many. Yeah, I mean it's like name anybody that you've ever listened to. If we've heard of them, they're an influence. You know, mainly it's a lot of the '70s hard rock bands, like Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, Alice Cooper, ACDC. But, you know, I listen to everything from old Bessie Smith, Frank Sinatra, to Metallica's latest, you know, and to M.O.D., to, to Bananarama, and it doesn't really matter. How do you consider yourself different from other rock and roll bands? A lot of bands are scared to venture into any territory except hard rock, and, they, and, and it's a lot of guys who feel like, well, if I do that, I'm wimpy. You know, no, it takes more, it, it takes, more hard to we, venture. We do whatever, whatever. I won't say any Christmas festival. So it's just we do whatever we want. We do what we felt like doing. That's what we've been doing, and that's why people like us. Why do you feel so many people compare to Aerosmith? Because it's sort of the same genre of of style as far as For, as far as the hard rock. It's a, they're a blues based hard rock band that are real street American street level rock and. We're from America, and we, and we like street-level rock, so it's real similar. How did you all get together? We were the only five people that could actually... I mean, this was, was the only singer, that was the only guitar player, that was wherever they are. He's the only people I could play with to start a band with that I liked. Same here, we went through so many different people, and this ended up being the people that we most believed in. We're like a family, we believe in each other. It varies. It varies depending on how the crowd is. Sometimes the crowd's like mesmerized and they stand there and they don't move. Other times they're like a bunch of thrashers, you know. And so like it varies on how it's going to be. We just give everything that we have during the show to the point of like it takes a lot of time to recover afterwards. Just describe a, a city and then describe the reaction from us and then describe the reaction from the crowd. And that's what you know, if you got a crowd of a bunch of stage divers diving off the balconies and stuff, that's how we are on stage. If they're all laid back and mellow, then we kind of get laid back and mellow and get into that group. We play off the vibe a lot. No, I feel broke us into it. Um, the labels were looking for a new young band that was rowdy again. We we sat we had like, sorry we had um, I think it was seven labels looking at us right, and we weren't even looking for a record deal. We were just playing, you know. So what we did was we signed our deal on our own. You know, we said this is what we want to do. We don't care for a record deal. We're not going to do this what we want, right? No, we're not we're restricted not at all. We have complete freedom. And that because they, they like what we're doing, they like our music. It, it ended up like they ended up enjoying the music, so it's very good being on Geffen. They're 100% behind us, so what else can we ask? The people at Geffen are great. Okay. Tell me something, if you've got such a dangerous and such a rowdy 
reputation. Tell me something that you've done that's been wild, or tell me a story that somehow you've ended up in trouble. Um, I don't know. What do you want? What do you want? Anything. This guy, we rent vans. He goes out and wrecks vans and passes out in the middle of the street. We stayed at the Gramercy Hotel here, and and the. Uh, one of our friends, West Arkeen, the uh, the guy jumped over the counter. His dad had a heart attack, and they didn't give him the message. And then when he yelled at the guy, the guy jumped over the counter and, and, and hit him. And then three guys jumped him and worked the hotel here in New York. So then he came up and got me. And I went downstairs, and, 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 and two big guys come up me with clubs, so I grabbed a huge metal sign, you know, and it was like a, a showdown. They backed off, and then the cops came, and, you know, that's like the most recent thing that's happened. Tell me why there are two versions of the Appetite for Destruction album cover. Why do you think there's two versions? Well, I have to get it on tape. Well, because there's a lot of record stores, a lot of record stores and stores that sell your record that did not like the cover and had a different opinion of what it meant. And so we knew that was going to happen, but we wanted to get the cover out, so then we made another cover. And it's bas basically there's two covers because we didn't want to you know we weren't stupid we didn't want to like limit our sales and plus we like both covers and it's fun having two versions out plus it's a catch 22 because we put out the first record right i mean the first i mean we put out the first cover sold so many you know with that and then changed it and the fucking first or the <laughs> the first cover the cover is inside the inner sleeve. Yeah, you so it's a catch twenty two, anyway. so it's like it doesn't really matter. You know? Are you worried that people like the PMRC will object or, or I don't really care about the PMRC. I don't care. I think it's stupid. I think people that are voting for people, you know, don't deserve to have somebody's wife or something like that, that that's not the person they voted for i'm not voting for who this guy decides to be with the more stickers they put on records the more records we sell yeah it's the whole it's the whole philosophy of being a teenager in rebellion you know the worse they get when the, the parents hate it the kids love it so it's like you know and then the parents end up finding a song they like so i like that yeah, they don't have a Crew. Yeah. Yeah. Three more days. Oh yeah. Four, three, four more days. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we were gonna do it on the original beginning of their tour, but um, we weren't ready yet. Our, our album hadn't been put out yet, and so they got White Snake, and they were real happy with that. But now White Snake is ready to um, start headlining on their own, and and they like us, and we like them, so it's like we're ready to do it. They're like, right, they're rolling out like the red carpet. I mean, they're giving us more lights than they usually give an opening act. They're giving us more monitors and more things. Yeah, and they're like, they're really helping us because they're, they're into what we're doing. And like, someone told me the other day, Circus Magazine told me that Vince Neil said some nice things about us. And he goes, Sides, I figure that any kid that has a Guns N' Roses album has a Motley Crue album too, so this should be great. It's probably, yeah. if you think about it, it's I think it'll be a good show for the kids. The best tour. You know, I think, I mean, for that, for what we do, for what Motley Crue does, what we do. It's pretty it's like, legit. You know, putting it right together. It's like, who else, you know? There hasn't been a rumble. It's, like it's pretty legit and unpretentious and not aimed at top 40 radio. You know, it, it's aimed at just coming from the heart, rock and roll. Do you think Vince being a teetotaler or at least doing these rad commercials will affect any kind of backstage antics during this game? I think you have to do those because of other reasons. That, you know, I wouldn't even want to get involved. So yeah, and I don't think it'll, it'll affect us. You know, it's like... We won't do anything to stir up any trouble on the tour, you know, in the hotel rooms is another story. Living such a quote-unquote reckless life, do you think there's any danger of burning out too early? Do you plan on being around for a couple of years? I'm not necessarily interested in the longevity as far as, as long as the music sticks around. As far as I'm concerned, it's just as long as we're having, we believe in what we're doing, you know. We so care about each other long. enough to keep each other in line, you know. You know, like I saved this guy's life couple times this week. What's yeah, your relationship to LA um, Yeah, there is. They're, they're friends of ours, and um, like we used to practice in the drummer's studio. I was a, I was an um, original singer in an old version of that band. Um, the guitar player in LA Guns 
Izzy lived with him. He grew up. Him and Slash were like friends in, in high school and rival bands and stuff like that. And the name Guns N' Roses came about from Tracy Guns and Axl Rose. And I, I said, well, let's just call it Guns N' Roses. And then he went back to L.A. Guns, and I called it Slash and Steve. And, you know, we just kept the name. Do you have any uh, plans for another album? Well, the EP, yeah, the EP is planned, and then we've already talked with Geffen that we will record a double album whenever we're done touring, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll put out a double album, we'll see how it sounds, and, and if it's a smart move to put out a, a double record, because it's going to cost more, but we've got all the material ready for it, and we're still writing new stuff, so we have about 40 songs ready to go that we believe in. I do a fashion segment on MTV called Addicted to Style. And do you have any, do you want to talk about your tattoos or, or any, any kind of fashion? Fashion? Statement. <laughs> that are consistent throughout members of the band. You know, well, I'm wearing, you know, wear whatever's laying around the hotel yeah. when you wake up, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you tell us about your tattoos? Um, a guy named Robert Benedetti does our tattoos on Sunset Strip. He does like Aussies and uh, Kevin Brady used to work there and he did Molly Cruz and stuff. And, uh, Thank you! It's like I think about a tattoo a long time before I get it. Like I got the, the one on my arm here um, before we had the album cover design. You know, Geffen saw this and liked it so much that they wanted to do a cover. And um, I don't know, fashion is just like, I believe in wearing and doing what you want to do, not what someone tells you to do. You know, that's what our fashion is. It's like it's like hard. You go into a, a nice hotel, you're renting out a whole floor, you're playing a big show in a town, you know, like we're on the cool tour, you know, you're playing for like 10,000 people sometimes, and these, they won't let you in the restaurant because of the dress code, and there's no one in it. You know, what is that? You know, and this guy's making like $8 an hour, you're blowing him away financially and successfully, and he's telling you you're a bum. Uh, schizo, see, I can turn it on or off. No, but I get thrown out of, out of everywhere, you know, for no real reason except for the fact this that I like to get drunk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, um, it's like, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much just whatever you wear, whatever you wake up in, and you just go and do what you gotta do. About tattoos, don't go get a tattoo. If you just just to get a tattoo, get something that you plan on having for the rest. Of your life. If you're gonna get one, make sure it means a lot to you, and you're gonna have it for the rest of your life. You know, like I, I when I come up with an idea for a tattoo, I think about it for a year. Do I really want that? Do I always want that on my arm? I'm not unhappy with anything I have. The only thing I'm bummed about is I got this tattoo right here, which is a Thin Lizzy album cover, and I always wanted to show it to Phil Lynott, and he died on me. I had, I got this one like whenever, and it's been years since I figured out what I was going to put on this one. Because I drew this one, right? It's my own drawing, so I figured if I ever get a tattoo, it'll be my own drawing. So I have to figure out what I want to get on this one. It's got to be something that I, you know, so it's like as soon as something I think is important enough for my goal. You know. <laughs>
It went on camera, it was a weird crowd. Let's go, one item. Oh, see, look. See how he did it? This is how it was supposed to be. This is what I. This is what they brought me and said, you, you, we'll do, do it this way.